Welcome to another Secret Influence TV interview. Do subscribe and get notified of more upcoming interviews. I interview people who have expertise to share to help you become more successful in life or empowering inspirational stories. Today, I am very excited to have Andy Ricky. Andy is an industrial and organizational psychologist with experience in helping people and organizations to unleash their potential. Andy currently works as an employment coach with Western College in Bristol. And in addition, he supports companies to embrace chance and improve their performance as a freelancer. So welcome, Andy. Great to have you on the show. Good to see you again. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nick. It's really great to be on your show. I watch your videos and are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Always good to get compliments. So just starting uh, with a few questions around sort of influencing, a very important skill. Why do you think influencing skills are so important in life? Well, Nick, the true question should be, why is it not really important? So influencing is such a, an important skill to have and more and more organizations are really requiring this skill on uh, uh, to candidate even. Sure. And, and so... Is extremely important because is uh you know it can make really a huge difference uh in uh, in your success. For example, imagine you know you are you are pitching uh, a project to an entrepreneur. Sure. Maybe talking about your startup, or maybe you are you need to communicate to your colleagues about the brilliant idea you you had, and maybe you might have had a brilliant idea, but if you are not able to communicate that effectively and influence other people to really jump on the boat with you, with that idea, well, you, you're not going to succeed. So that can make really a huge difference. So I get, I, cause I, I think you're right, Andy. I think actually a lot of people are quite good at communicating clearly. Um, but actually to be really successful, you know, in, in business, but also I think in, in work, you know, for your career, you've got to be able to not just be able to communicate clearly, but you need to be able to persuade people to listen and to take action sometimes. You know, you have to be able to influence people to to take to, to do to take a certain course of action. You know, if you want like you say, if you want someone to um, buy your product, if you've got <laughs> if you've got your service, if you're in business or in a workplace, if you manage people, you've got to got to influence their behavior so um i think that's a big big difference as you know it's communication skills and there's actually influencing skills isn't there absolutely i completely agree with you that's such an important such an important skills and then something that really make the difference between a for example a great leader uh, and one that is not great so we one of the probably most famous uh, example of great influencing one one of the great greatest leader in this really like Steve Jobs. You know, yes. the if you think about the reality distortion feed, you know, the, the ability of really convincing everybody about what you are saying, you know, about about something is really something quite brilliant and making really sure that your team believe, believe in, in you, in your project, in in the change you want to promote is, I think is yeah, really... no, great example. I mean, I, I think Steve, just yeah, had Steve Steve Jobs. I mean, he had the sort of the, the expertise in in technology, but he had that passion, didn't he? I mean, that was the thing. You know, he really believed in not just his product, you know, and brand, but he believed in, you know, what it could change the world. You know, he thought that you know Apple. The, you know the business he worked in the brand could change the world you know he he believed in it so strongly and i think that was what made him such a powerful influencer powerful person speaker wasn't it don't, i mean what do you think That's... absolutely you know i i think you you just said something really great so he was believing it could change the world and yeah. that really make a difference you know because if you want to influence other people to uh, to follow you, you know, to to make a great project, to sure. organize uh, a fantastic event, 
you are to be the first one that believe that can be possible. And uh, I believe that matter really with the uh, link very well with the uh, psychological construct I really love with his self-efficacy. Okay. Tell, tell me more about that. They basically is like by uh, American psychologist Bandura and basically is the belief your belief that you can actually uh, achieve the goal, the project you you want to achieve, and then basically this transmutes in in a collective self-efficacy. Okay. So, and actually, if you as a leader, you are able really to make sure that uh, your team believe in that that you know, is really. Do you, do you think, Andy, that um, to, you know, if you're in a position of leadership, being being able to influence people, part of that is getting the people in your team to 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 believe in a you know believe in that common goal, you know, believe in the vision, you know, to think, you know, if you can get them on board and and believing um, what in the why, you know, behind decision making, they're more likely to do it. Is that a big part of it? Yes, I I think that's really a big part of it. It's really um is really a big part and definitely is not easy. It's not uh, mm. uh is not is not something uh so straight away. It's, um and uh, definitely is important in this sense, you know, that to to get everybody involved really in this vision. Mm to explain, to communicate why that is important. So, but the vision is uh, extremely important, is really what, what uh, help us then to, to set the goals and to achieve great results. Okay. Um, so I, I, I've, I've, you know, I believe that influencing is such an important skill and we should all Everyone needs to be better influencing because you know, in, you know, in our if we want to be successful in our career, we need to in, well, we need to influence people to get the job. The influence the interviews we get a job. We need to influence our, our managers to get the promotion. We need to influence in business. If we can't influence our audiences, we won't be able to sell our product and be in business. And even relationships, you know, influencing people positively um, is important, so that uh, we can persuade them to go on a, a date with us. You know, I think I think. Influence is such an important skill of everyone, but I just want to ask you a few questions about, you know, you know, influencing can be seen as a positive thing or can be seen sort of perhaps negatively. What first question is? What, what did you think of the ethical considerations to using influence to change behaviour in in either workplace or or business? Well, I I completely completely agree with you. So influencing influencing first of all is a is a tool and the tool can be used well to do something great or maybe it can be used in a very evil way. Like we have great example of uh, great, you know, great leaders in, uh, in our history, in really even our recent history that really made um, a very unethical, use of the the influencing power sure. but at the same time uh, yes you you can really real, realize something uh, something great and and we have even great example like martin luther king for example that really used influencing influencing to make a positive change in the in the world we live so I think that there are uh, a few considerations to to make also because even in an organization, if you do this in a bad way, um, you try to force something, uh, this can be that can become even manipulation. Okay, okay, yes. And uh, well, and this, I not sure is really the best way to influence people because at the end you know if people realize that and often they realize 
especially in a, in a job environment, that can have really a boomerang effect. Sure. And uh, it can become a breach of trust. And uh, trust, once it's uh, broken, is very difficult to build back. And then good luck in sure. influencing uh, your employee, the people you work with, your friends. Trust is really important. So I think that there are a few principles that we really need to follow from an ethical uh, perspective. So first of all, we really want to make sure that uh, that uh, we stick to authenticity. Okay, yeah, great. And we really try to uh, not manipulate people, no, just, uh, uh, you know, we really have to, we have to explain yeah. clearly what we want to, to obtain. I like that point about trust because there, there's that saying, you know, in in business, if you want people to buy from you, they need to know you, know you exist, <laughs> like you, and uh, then trust you. And I think trust is so important because if you want to influence people um, positively, obviously, you know, you, you need them to trust you. And getting across that they can trust you and, and trust who you are and what you're saying is so important. I think that is key but if you if you if you lose people's trust it's so much harder to then regain it you know it's it's trust is a key part of influence i think influencing people and um that's i i that's a fantastic point there yeah absolutely and probably is the most difficult thing you really win trust of somebody that is uh it's really challenging <laughs> yeah and of course um talking about the workplace um because i know this is one of the areas you sort of so sort of specialize in what what are some of the sort of practical strategies for using influence effectively in the workplace so you know yeah at any level so it could be a a, a manager senior you know at a high level or even you know at, at any level yeah can you walk through some sort of practical strategies well uh practical strategies so i believe there are really few strategies so uh first of all as um, I said, it's really important to communicate clearly. Now you want to, to make a change, you want to influence strategy, why you want to do that, why that is important. And uh, um, any very important point, for example, in uh, change management is really very often create a sense of urgency because, okay. uh, you know, uh, whatever change you are trying to achieve, you know, it's quite frequent to deal with uh, with the uh, change of version. That's quite sure. normal, you know. Why why we want to change when uh, we are used to the system, to that process, to um, change is always a risk, you know. It sure. comes from our evolution. So when we were in the cave, yeah. Where you want to to leave a cave, yeah. where you are safe and maybe you risk to be eaten yeah. by by a wild animal. Sure, sure. But actually, you know, if you don't take a risk, then you are not able to mm. improve your situation to yeah. uh, find uh, uh, a best a, a better food provision, a better a more safer mm. uh, cave for your sure. for your tribe. So, but communicating why why you want to embrace change for example is extremely important mm. then I like to account. then something uh something else is really important to consider what changes you you want to deal with so is that uh, a great uh, merge and acquisitions or maybe is really like uh, you are uh, for example, trying to implement uh, artificial intelligence on sure. uh, on uh, in your organization, what change you are trying to achieve? So that's quite important. And sure, um, yeah, I'll just pick up on one of those points: the urgency. I think that's a good good resonates with me um, as a as a copywriter. You know, if if I want people to to do something you know as a result of my 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 writing my article my post 
then creating a sense of urgency is a key key strategy. And I think you're right. People, I think people don't like change. Most people don't like change. You know, we have a comfort in in stability and and in in um and and there's a fear or risk of in change. You know, it's get out of our comfort zone and to make people um take a, take action um and perhaps react to ch a change and do something you need to create an urgency you have to say well you need to do this now for this reason um so that's yeah that's a, that's a i think that really resonates with me that point there yeah uh, what what role do you think and the emotional intelligence plays in in influencing other people's behavioral decisions is it play yeah. a factor well, I, I think that really is really key, is really essential. Um, you know, that in, emotional intelligence really affects the way we we understand, uh, we create empathy with the other, we really listen. And this is something uh, is probably the most frequent mistake in trying to influence uh, influence people at, you know, whichever whichever is your goal. Maybe you want to sell a product or maybe you want to influence change on the workplace, but start by listening to the people you are talking to. And that's really, really important. Understand what is the need? What is, a, uh, for example, uh, as a coach, it's very important to understand, for me to understand what motivates that person. Okay. And yeah. That is where is where you can create engagement and then influence a person. But everything starts really with the active listening. Okay. Okay. Good, good, uh that's a good so the starting point if you want to influence other people's behavior is to actually actively listen and understand them as a person, you know, what what, what their needs and motivations are, I guess, before you try and influence their behavior. Yes, and definitely emotional intelligence is uh, is really essential, essential for that. Is really what okay, uh, and and stimulate with this. Moving on to another uh, sort of technique, um, which is an important one, I think, in in communicating, you know, in in, in presentation and communication skills is storytelling. Do you think storytelling? can be used as a tool for, for influence and persuasion? Absolutely. You know that I agree <laughs> <laughs> as a fellow Toastmasters. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about it at the end. I'll get a big, I'll get a, <laughs> that's going to be one of the things that's on my list to talk about. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, that storytelling, storytelling is, uh, is, uh, is essential. It's really an amazing technique. Uh, and as we know, it's not easy. It's not to be a, a great, a great storyteller. Uh, but actually, if you see even at some great example, you know the the fables we we grew up when we were kids, or, or even the Bible. Probably, but like many religious books, you know, probably the most popular books in uh, in the world, and uh, you know the. They explain you very complex ideas, but they are not using uh, philosophical principles. Sure. They are using stories, very easy to understand from a, a wide, a wide audience and then really linked with the with your emotions. And yeah. uh, you know, and you by telling an amazing story, you can uh, Make sure that your the people you are talking to, that for example, they find you relatable, sure. and then more easily get actually the message you want to deliver them. Yeah, no, I um, we 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 will reveal the yeah the store the uh, Toastmaster connection at the end and have a chat about that. But I think um, but uh, storytelling yeah is such a powerful um way of communicating key messages and getting people to take action and i think you know whether it's speaking on stage whether it's in a meeting whether it's whether it's written communication i think people yeah i, I mean i agree it's it's a way of 
making perhaps sometimes complicated messages complicated in making them relatable because it's um I think the for, the story makes an enjoyable format. It's you know I think that's one thing we you know we enjoy the the, the way a story is told. It brings us in, engages us. But also I think it's a bit more personal, isn't it? If we tell a story, we're we're, we're relating it at a personal level. And so I think you know we we can stand there and give a formal you know this is what you need to do what do why. But if you bring that personal storytelling into it. Absolutely. So the uh, yeah the next uh, question on my list um if if you are trying to positively influence people in say in a workplace um you, you know you need them to do something um and inevitably there's you know there is there is always resistance um when you want to when you want to uh, you talked earlier about you know change management you know if you're introducing some <laughs> change of in Within an organization, change is hard, you know. And if if it was, how do you overcome resistance to change when you're trying to influence behavior in the workplace? Well, that's that's so difficult, and it's really difficult. You are always going to face some uh, resistance uh, to that. But again, it's really important communicate clearly and uh, create a sense of urgency and. And then something else that I have not still mentioned. Um, I'm really a big fan of uh, nudging. And okay, tell me more about that. And uh, basically, you know, that is about uh, um, about you know nudging people to adopt certain behaviors. For example, eating healthier food. Okay. Or adopting certain behavior on the, on your workplace by making that behavior easier and maybe even uh, more uh, more likable okay and okay. other behavior and uh, to give you an example in a, in a canteen it could be like putting healthy foods like salads and vegetables sure. at the high of of the highs rather okay. than in a difficult spot. At the same time, you could do even the opposite, and you know some uh, food chain might put you know the <laughs> the less health food uh, in a more easy spot. Yeah, but, you know this is really and it's something you can do really in a, even in a, in an organization. So you want really to make uh, easier that behavior, that change you want people to embrace rather than uh, more difficult because if you if people will find that that things too difficult to complicate it will struggle to understand that will be less likely to sure to adopt that change it's in it's interesting uh yeah the point about the canteen because i guess there's a there's a relationship sometimes between the environment um but that, that, that people are in and and behavior so if you want to um people to act a certain way um the way you create an environment can have a difference um i think on on the point of food i know that supermarkets classically have always put the treats and the chocolates by the checkout so the people are shopping last minute or yes. grab them. um and actually they're now starting to change starting change i think and put more fruit um to try and encourage people to grab the fruit when they're going out but um it's it's it, i think that is a big that's a big area of actually yeah, how can we reinforce behavior <laughs> or influence people by the environment whether and a canteen at work is one i think uh staff rooms could be another one you know um but yeah how do how do we uh um, break out rooms staff rooms you know communal areas canteens i think how 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 these rooms are set up also you know what 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 notices are there how you know how are they with colors in the room i think all these things I don't know whether you think you agree. You know, all these things play a part in in how we influence behavior. Well, uh, I think I think so. You know, I think that really uh, colors can can really affect behaviors. And uh, uh, but I I don't know a lot about this. So. <laughs> no, I I because I, I I'm quite fascinated by this, and I I, I read this. Um, article about this building company in london 
and it had a high amount of accidents um, by the builders. Um, it, was on a, it was on a bigger building, a big sky tower, a uh, sky, uh, skyscraper. Um, and it was mostly um, men who were doing the work, you know, builders, mostly men. Um, and it was quite, and what they found was it was a very macho, you know, male environment. And, and the the um, canteens and the staff rooms were very um, functional and very dark colours and very hard. And so what they did was they introduced softer colours um, softer furniture and um and and uh more social notices in the walls and they and they did and they adopted this and they found that the accidents went down because it it slowly changed the culture a bit you know so rather than you know the, you know uh, having people work in a dangerous job at these skyscrapers and building then going into a very tough environment you know in, in the, you know very sort of dark colored hard tables but they didn't relax. They were still, you know, so they found that actually if they created an environment where they could um, step away from that, you know, and, and relax, and then, yeah, it reduced, apparently it reduced, so. That's amazing. <laughs> um, what, what, I've actually got a question, um, what what you think about, so I'll give you another example, then I'll ask your thoughts on it. Um, I, I, I think it's a classic thing, if you can sometimes go into supermarkets, you can hear music. And I think there's a, a big supermarket that played uh I don't know it's German music um in the in the uh wine wine part of the supermarket when they had a special on German wine. And um they played German music and then people bought more German what German wine. And when it, when there's a French often they're trying to sell more French wine, they play French music. Um and the influence of the music, people are more likely to buy the product. I mean, what do you think about sort of some you know, so sort of subliminal more, you know, more subtle forms of influence. You know, do you? Well, I think that actually these uh, influence you are describing are really powerful, and is something we often see. You know, that, mm. and the only fact that, uh, for example, um, a pen was uh, was linked to a to a jingle was making sure that the pen was uh, was sold more. Mm. than another pen that maybe was oh. even more expensive. So these things really are really powerful or even, you know, that something that they do in some supermarket where you you start smelling sure. the smell of the bread, you know. Yeah, that really, classic. They, and that actually uh, push you to, to buy more bread. So um, it's quite it's quite interesting. It's yeah. very interesting how... Actually, there, there are uh, many studies that show how actually we are uh, affected somebody. We, we we buy a product not because of a, a feature of the product itself, something that make it actually more effective. Mm. Like, for example, like um, a washing up liquid. You know, if that washing up liquid is going to be... Uh, being better, well, that's very yeah. very good to buy. But maybe be, you're buying that because it smells better, or because it it make uh, uh, beautiful bubbles. That sure. actually is not necessarily something that affect the quality mm. of the product, but definitely it affect our will to to buy that. I think we, I think that's a, a good example that we, I think we forget the, you know. In decision making and behavior, we we forget how actually emotion plays such a big thing. And I, you know, I, again, <laughs> I've read, you know, read or you know, I heard this that most of our decisions we base on emotion. Um, but then we just most of our buying decisions we base on emotion and we justify and logic. So we will we will buy something because it has that connection association with with you know with with uh, with you know pleasure or enjoyment or. And it could be something like you say the smell of something, or the, or, or you know, relates to an advert, or we've you know something that gives us you know we look at it, we see it, we think of, you know it had a how we'll feel, how we'll feel when we buy the product, and then but it's you know actually whether it's the best product, probably you know is it the best product with benefits, with its cost, with what it does? Often it isn't, but we but we'll justify it later. We'll justify the cost. We'll justify where we need it, but when we buy it, like you said, it's it's often those associations of and smell yeah. big one, yeah. Absolutely, you know that uh, what you are saying is something very interesting, and actually, 
emotions have such an important impact on uh, our decisions. Mm. And actually, is you know, it, it's been proven that is a uh, you know the 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 emotions really affect our our decisions in even more than our rational thinking and also because uh, you know when we look at the product in a, a fraction of seconds that immediately there is an emotion a, a perception of the product that come say to our brain to our ancient part of our brain sure. the amygdala and uh, and then actually the uh, only in a second time we are able to think mm. about the decision think what we want really to buy this amazing smartphone with this oh. beautiful with this beautiful design we really need that but uh, what happens is that our emotions already got there and sure. basically they already unbalance our our judgment yeah of course you and are. that's what make you know often you buy stuff that you don't need and then you end up regretting or justifying that sure. with something oh, oh actually you know i really need that smartphone yeah. because sure. <laughs> i have a youtube channel <laughs> Yeah, that is true, true. You justify anything afterwards, isn't it? <laughs> um, and so I've got a couple more questions on my list. The uh, next one is about um, difficult personalities. So, you know, if you are trying to influence um, someone and they've got, you know, and they've, sometimes people are just um, difficult people. I mean, sometimes people are resistant to anything you say. Um you know, sometimes um, it's clash and personalities. What would you know? Do you have any sort of tips on what you know how to do that? I suppose it's a bit of a conflict management, isn't it? A bit of it's a bit of a I don't know. But how do you any sort of tips on that? You know, how if you're trying to influence behavior and, you, and you've got difficult personalities? Well, that's really is really difficult actually. Sometimes it's really difficult to. Uh, persuade somebody about something when they have a strong position and uh, um, it's not always always possible I would say but uh, definitely again it's really important to show comprehension and active oh. listening um, again clear communication but uh, it's really important then to to understand why that person disagree? Because there is, there might be some uh, some value there, and you could really learn something mm. about uh, why that change with the change you are trying to implement, or that uh, the things you are trying to persuade the person about is not uh, uh, is not good for this person. Sure, and then actually it might be that this is not the only person thinking that. So it's really important yeah. to. You know to really listen and understand um in definitely you know be assertive and, and yeah. communicative i guess it's getting that balance isn't it when um of listening understanding the other person or the audience understanding the audience what their needs are um who they are what their needs are and but at the same time you've got to be yeah you got if you got if you want people to do something you've got to be but you've got to be motivating, but you've got to be assertive as well. You've got to be, you know, you've got to uh, stand your ground sometimes as well. So it's getting that balance and that, like all these things. Hmm. Uh, just uh, with, 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 you know, sort of influence and things, you know, how do you, um, how do you sort of identify, you know, just perhaps you yourself, how do you, um, how do you measure success and identify areas of improvement? So, you know, in, in, but even communication and influence, you know, how do you think, um, that will lead into our talk about Toastmasters, how would you identify areas of improvement? How you identify area of improvement? Well, um, that's something that you can do in, uh, in several, in several areas. Of course, in uh, many organizations, you have uh, uh, KPI, and uh, and so you can really see where Measure. you want to improve. But again, uh, 
really going back to listening, and that's uh, that's really important. And definitely, you know, as a as a psychologist, we have some great tool, and especially uh, you can run a climate analysis. And for example, really gather the opinion of the employee in in that environment, and really understand what needs to be improved, what uh, what we are doing well, what maybe uh, people are finding uh, unnecessary stress. And oh. some, sometimes, you know, you have really to understand mm. everybody in the organization also because often people that are dealing with that specific problem uh, are um, no better what is working well, what is not working that, and uh, by listening them, then you are able to implement uh, improvement. And uh, yeah, let them. Um, I yeah. So I think active listening is so important. I I heard that um, the best salespeople are the people that um, ask questions and listen. And that um, if you're a salesperson, you should listen 70, 70 or 80% of the time and, and ask questions only 20%. And the worst salesmen are people who just ask, constantly ask those questions. Um, and sorry, who talk, sorry, talk too much. Um, because actually, yeah, if you want to influence someone, if you want to sell to someone, if you want, you know, you have to li you have to ask questions, take an interest, and listen, and that's the way to do it. So, I think you know you said it a few times, but I think your active listening it is a it seems you know a key point, isn't it? Yes, probably is the great takeaway of this uh, <laughs> of this video. Um, so coming towards the end of our of our, of our interview, our chat, you know, like like often, you know, I could I could chat for hours, Andy, because I love this subject. But let's talk a bit about how, how we know each other. Um, so, you know, we, we know each other through Toastmasters. And if you want to improve your communication skills, your presentation skills, your leadership skills, your influence and persuasion skills, um, we cannot have this interview with at least talking briefly about Toastmasters. So do you want to um, say, you know, why you do it? Why is it a good thing? How does it help with influencing skills, Joanne? Absolutely, you know. So Toastmasters is really a great place. First is because it's where really uh, me and Nick we we met together and we shared this journey into leadership, where we are both division directors in uh, in District ninety one, which is basically the district in uh, in southern England, and. Um, and well, um, it, it's really a great organization. It's really, so if you want to improve your public speaking, your leadership skills, uh, is really something you you should get into because uh, you find plenty of people happy to support you and you can uh, practice your public, public, public speaking skills and get uh, some feedback, but there are always really great feedback on what you 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 did well and what you could improve, but always in a very constructive way. So really great, and there's plenty of opportunity to develop yourself to really. Yeah, no, I, I um, so I, I don't know if many people watching this, you know, some people have never heard of Toastmasters, some people have heard of it, but don't stand it. But so you know, it's the world's biggest and oldest public speaking elite organization. Um, and it's not for profit, so you know it's uh, it's, it's it's you know it's a great value membership organization dedicated to those skills. What I want to ask you is, um, so Andy, so for me, yes, you know, transform me from perhaps a very quiet, introverted person over the last ten years to a lot more confident speaker. Um, and I I like the fact that it's it's learning by doing. You know, you practice, you practice. You know, and and it is such a, you know, all, every, I'm never, every club I've been to, every, you know, it's always an encouraging, supportive environment. You know, it, that is such an appeal there that, you know, you know, you're going to have support and encouragement and you get an opportunity to practice and practice. Um, with with you, Andy, so obviously, you know, in your work, you know, you work in, 
in, in communication communications and influence. But how how obviously it is very challenging these roles, the leadership role we do. But how have you? What, how has it helped you specifically? And what you know? What how has Toastmasters? Is, you know, is it um is it doing the leadership roles? Is it the fact that you, you know you touch on it? Is it the fact you 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 get your feedback? What's what's share a bit about how it's helped you? Well, uh, Toastmasters is really helping me in so many ways. So first of all, it really helped me to to build my self confidence, and which is uh, something uh, extremely important. But then uh, you know you in Toastmaster you you get the opportunity to practice uh, such a big range of people and really it taught me for example how to not only how to better communicate with uh, with people that is something I'm really learning every single time I I walk into a Toastmaster club but also really how to engage with people which is something really extremely important, for example, in my in my job as employment coach. Sure. Um, and of course, like th there are many roles where you have to uh, really keep engaged with people, you know, really motivate people to achieve the educational goals. And uh, yeah, so, and Toastmaster is really, really amazing for that. It really great, great, uh, Great lesson I learned that. And, and I, I guess just to sort of bring in a few things you mentioned earlier about, you know, you, you mentioned about active listening, uh, you know, clear communication, understanding the other people's needs, motivating assertiveness, influence, all these things that you've, you know, you've mentioned throughout our, our, our chat um, are all things that you learn in Toastmasters. You know, it's, you, you know, I think if you, if you do Toastmasters, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not just, you know, giving a speech, you know, it is actually learning how to actively listen to people. It is how to motivate people, inspire people, how to persuade them to do something, to, to do something, you know, how to, um, all these, all these, tell stories, another one, storytelling, such a powerful way of communicating, such a powerful way of motivating, inspiring others. And that's something that is, you know, it's a key thing we learn in Toastmasters. Um, so we're coming towards the end of our time here, Andy. If people want to reach out, are you happy? You know, and they want to, you know, they want to speak. Yeah, you know, want to contact you. Can they reach on LinkedIn? Oh yes, absolutely. So I'm on LinkedIn. So that is probably is the best, uh, the best way they can they can connect. If you want to connect with me, please uh, do that. I'm really happy to to do so. Fantastic. Uh, so, um. So yes, do do uh, subscribe to the channel, Signalist TV. Get notifications. We've got lots of people lined up with exciting, inspirational stories to blow you away. Some fantastic tips and expertise to help you become more successful in your business, in your life, in your work. So that is it. Fantastic, Andy. Be industrial and organizational psychologist, the employment coach, and also the division director of Toastmasters. Thanks, Andy. Um, great to chat to you, <laughs> as always. Thank you so, thank you so much, Nick. Okay. Always great to see you. Thanks.